Hey everyone and welcome to another edition of 2 Minute Photoshop Tricks. Today we're taking a look at making shiny text. As always, we're going to cruise through these tricks fairly quickly, so feel free to pause or rewind the podcast if we're going too fast. And remember, always work on a copy of the image, not the original. taking a bit of a break from our photo related hints to take a quick look at a really fun text trick that you can use to make super slick logos, text headers, or anything else where you need shiny text. So to get started with this trick, create a new document in Photoshop by going to the file menu and hitting new. Enter dimensions for your new document in the new document dialog box. For my example, I'm going to use a width of about 4 inches and a height of about 2 inches at 300 pixels per inch. Of course, you can use whatever size you want, but try to err on the large side of things since it's much easier to downsample your image than upsample it later. Now select the text tool from your tool palette and click the text tool in the middle of your document. Type the text you want to make shiny and hit both the Command and A keys on a Mac or the Control and A keys on a PC to select all of your text. Now with your text highlighted, you can adjust your font, font color, and font size at the top of Photoshop using the Options toolbar. Or you can use the Character Palette. If your Character Palette isn't visible, you can open it by going to the Window menu and selecting the character option. If your text happens to run off your document, you can always move it with the Move tool in the Tools palette. Now we need to add some basic effects to our text. So go to the Layers palette and click the little button at the bottom of the palette that looks like a black circle with the letter F in the middle. Then pick the Gradient Overlay option from the menu that pops up. This will bring up a new dialog box, and you should notice your text in your document window change to a gradient. In the middle of your dialog box, you should see a bunch of settings starting off with blend mode, then opacity, gradient, and so on. Make sure that next to the gradient option, you see a black to white gradient, and your blend mode is set to normal. Then grab the opacity slider and drag it to the left while keeping an eye on your image. You probably want a value of between 35 and 50 for your opacity, but your exact value will depend on your colors and what you personally think looks good. Now on the left side of the same dialog box, you should see a list of other effects. Click on the entry that says stroke. Make sure to click on the actual word stroke not just the checkbox next to the word. This will change the middle of your dialog box to display our stroke options, and we'll probably put a red line around your text. The first thing we want to do is change that red color. To change the color, click on the little rectangle filled with red near the middle of the dialog box. It should say color to the left of it. This will bring up your color picker. Select a color similar to the color of your text, but make sure it's quite a few shades darker. Click OK to dismiss the Color Picker dialog box when you find a color that works. This will bring us back to the Layers Styles dialog box that should still have our stroke options visible. The only other option we need to change in this section of the dialog box is the size slider at the top. Drag this to the right till you have a fairly large border around your text. Not anything huge, but not thin either. I used 8 pixels for my example. 
But again, this will probably vary depending on the size of your text. Now click OK to apply these settings to the text layer. Next we need to create a new layer in our image by clicking the little button that looks like a sticky note at the bottom of our layers palette. Then select the elliptical marquee tool from the tools palette. You may have to click and hold on the rectangular marquee tool in the tools palette to be able to select the elliptical option. Click and drag out a wide ellipse selection. The selection should start well to the left and above your text. Then dip down to about one third or one half the way down your text and extend past the right end of your text. You should end up with a large elliptical selection that selects the top third or half of your text and quite a bit of white space above it. You can see an example of how this selection should look on our website. Now comes a slightly tricky part. With your new layer selected in the layers palette, hold the command, option, and shift keys on the Mac, or the control, alt, and shift keys on a PC, and click on the little T icon in the text layer below our new layer in the layers palette. If you don't have a T icon, just click the text layer with the appropriate keys held down. This will change our selection to the intersection of our previous selection, which was the ellipse, and of the text. So now we should have the tips of our text selected with a nice curve in the bottom of the selection. Now go to the Select menu Pick the Modify option, then the Contract option. A new dialog box will pop open. Enter a value of between 2 and 5 pixels in the Contract by Value box. Then click OK. This will make our selection just a little bit smaller around all the edges. Now grab your Gradient tool from the Tools palette and set your foreground color to white. You can set your foreground color to white very quickly by pushing the D key on your keyboard, followed by the X key. Select a foreground to transparent gradient from the Gradients preset menu at the Options bar at the top of Photoshop. Then drag out a gradient from the bottom of your selection to just past the top of the selection. This will add a highlight to the selected portion of the text but it's probably a bit too strong. So with our new layer in the Layers palette selected, change the Layers Blending Mode from Normal to Soft Light. You can do this with the pop-up menu near the top of the Layers palette. If the highlight is still too harsh, reduce the opacity of the layer by using the Opacity slider right next to the Blending Mode pop-up menu. Okay, now you should have some nice shiny text. If you want to go a little bit further, you can add a lens flare from the filter, then render menu, or you can add all kinds of other textures and effects. That's it for this week's show. Make sure to tune in next week for another great show. Also stop by our website to vote in our listener poll. Our newest poll is to determine the Photoshop contest subject, so make sure to get your vote in. You can find our website at 2 If you have a question about Photoshop or a comment about the show, send me an email at kent at 2 or leave us a voicemail at 310-928-3214 or Skype us at kent.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.